Hey guys, it's Karen Hutton, and I am so excited to be back from my road trip and back on my Friday Photographer Inspiration Lives. So uh, today, I'm, while everybody's, you know, getting in here, um, I'll tell you that I have a guest on today I'm super excited about, and uh, his name is Fred Ago. He is a Fujifilm creator. That's how I know Fred. Actually, I don't really know Fred that well. I just met him through Fujifilm. I think he's fascinating. I think he's an incredible photographer. And I thought you guys would enjoy meeting him. So um, he is coming in right about... It's in here, he'll be here. Fred Ago is incredible. Wait till you hear his voice. Oh my God, he's amazing. And his work is stunning. He's gonna talk a little bit about that. Hey, Fred. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Is that enough light for me? Ah, uh, you could use a little more light and you could tip your camera down because you're kind of like peeking over the bottom there. It's a weird split with this Insta two part dealio that we have going on. Okay. I was in the frame at first. Give me. I know. So was I. I always have to adjust it once we go with two people and then four people. It's a whole other three people, four people. It's a whole other deal. Okay. Give me. Just give me about three minutes. I'll take your time. Take your time. So I will um, just say to everybody, we're going to be talking about inspiration. We're going to be talking about photography. I want you to get to know Fred a little bit and uh, and hear about his work. When I um, first went and looked at his work, both his commercial work, because he's a portrait and wedding photographer, but then his personal work, mind blown. The colors, the depth, the stories are just amazing. Some of you, it looks as though no, Fred. And um, yeah, and we have Fujifilm in common as well. So I'm super, super excited. Skylark Designs, hello, my friend in France. This, so we have France in the house. All right. We have Scotland in the house. We have Michael, how are you? Skylark Designs. I'm mentioning that because people should like go check you out because you're amazing. I've spent some of my best and most wondrous and most, I just don't even know how to describe it, time at Skylark in uh, Grasse in France, one of my favorite places to be. And uh, so it's awesome. It's windy Scotland. It's windy in Scotland, is it? Is it stormy or just windy in Scotland? Let's see, I also want to let people know New Haven in the house. Yay, where else are y'all from? Where are you hailing from? All my lovely people in the house. I want to know, I love knowing this. I also want to mention to you all, um, I'm for the holidays, I've got more of my friends coming in. I've got, um, let's see, I think Brian Muneer is coming in on December 10th. Deb Sandage on this, oh boy, do I have the dates? Deb Sandage is on the third, Rick Salmon on the 17th, and I got a few other friends I'm waiting to hear back from. Eureka, Montana. Oh my gosh, I love Montana. Must be getting cold up there. Winter is on its way in Montana. There's Fred. He's getting in there. Fred, for those of you just coming in, I'm talking today with Fred Ago, a fellow Fujifilm conspirator. <laughs> He's the Fujifilm creator. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a Fujifilm ex photographer, which is our, our big connection here. Um, so we're going to talk photography and inspiration. And I don't know, we're just going to see what bubbles up. Fuji Fred, exactly. I'm going to have right. him share where you can find him. Fuji Fred on Instagram as well as uh, Fred Ago Photography on Instagram. He's got two, he maintains two. I don't know how you do that, by the way. I tried that. We're going, we're going for a swirl here. Yeah. Let's see, east of Scotland is getting battered. Really, there's a red alert. Oh, we're still getting strong winds in the west though. So how bad is a red alert in Scotland? Is it like a hurricane? Gosh, the weird weather everybody's having, it's kind of blowing my mind. Welcome, welcome everyone. We have Fred Ago in the house. So um, while, okay, so while Fred's adjusting his light so we can see him and stuff, because at Instagram, when you go with two, it sort of changes all the framing, it's crazy. 
um, I'll let you know that my subscribers on my mailing list, we're getting a, gonna do a get together. We've never done that. I've never done this with my, uh, with my email private peeps. And so we're gonna do a, um, a get together, a Zoom, a Zoom holiday meetup. I figure this holiday season, I'm gonna pull in my friends. We're gonna throw out some inspiration I'm doing this holiday meetup. So if you wanna be a part of that on my subscriber list, jump over to art.com. Link is in the bio, sign up. You also get 20% off your first order, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but aside from that, we're gonna, we're gonna do this great meetup and I'll be sending out, I've been sending out emails, but I'll be sending out another one with the link of where to sign up. And uh, we've got two dates it's looking right now, it's looking like December 13th is winning uh, the popularity vote. <laughs> so uh, you can check that out. Red Aga, the best in Houston, they're saying in the chat. Oh man, pressure. Yeah. <laughs> After seeing your work, I think I'm going to agree. Look at that handsome face. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> know how to make you blush. You <laughs> well, it doesn't, take, it doesn't take much to throw out compliments to you because, you guys, if you don't know Fred, he, he's just amazing. I mean, I'm telling you, his voice, his work, his the colors, your colors are just, ah. And your yeah. Work, my toes curl. Loved my daughter's wedding photography experience and photos. So a happy client is in the house. That's so awesome. I love that. All right, all right. Blessed all right. to know Fred. I feel that way already, and I barely know you. I wanted to do this because I really don't know Fred that well. And we, we've met, like, once in a meeting, and yeah. I just fell in love with him. And I was like, you have got to come on live, and we've all got to get to know each other and have a love fest for the holidays. That's all there is to it. All right. <laughs> So that's awesome. So welcome. You look fantastic. We can see you. You're in frame. The world is good. Yes. Yes. So uh, first of all, we're going to do this at the end too, but tell people where to find you. And, and just, just for those who don't know Fred, just let us know a little bit about what you do, um, basically, commercially and otherwise. I, I just blabbed on and talked about it, but I want to hear you say it. Legendary mm -hmm. Fred. We're right. just gonna call you. Can I just call you legendary? We'll take it, all right? <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, my name is Fred Aga. I'm a Houston-based commercial photographer. I uh, do portraiture and uh, wedding work as well, too. I've been doing this over 10 years. I started um, when I was in college football. Uh, we were going to all these interesting places, so I said, let me just go ahead and step it up and get this DLSR. Uh, we are going to Oregon and Hey, when I say Oregon, I know it might not that be that interesting because you're in California. I'm up to Oregon, the West. I'm right? in Nevada, actually. Now. Nevada? So you're yeah. in the West? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm like an inner city kid from Houston. So I was like, pine trees. and Oregon must have blown your mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, so we went out there. Um, they were saying it was hot and it was 84 degrees. I was like, no, it's not. But, um, yeah, so got into that photographing my teammates. I've always had, I've always, I was always the photo bug. Um, and it just kind of rolled from there. Um, what else, what, what else, refresh me. Just, I, just uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just kind of wanted people that, that, my people who don't know you to know a little bit more about you and kind of, so here's the thing with this series of Instagram lives, what started it and what I'm finding really interesting that I love to ask people and, and, you know, just kind of make it a, a thread and a point, you know, kind of a perspective is purpose. So I started mm. with purpose because I think it's really an interesting springboard for a discussion because it changes the conversation from, I do this and I shoot with that and I like this and blah, 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 to why, to your mm -hmm. why, to your, um, what drives you in your work and your perspective. Like when I look at your work, there's so much passion. There's, the colors are just out of this world that you, you know, you, you have a color palette that is phenomenal. And when I see some of these things in someone's work, they're um, like, I look at some people's work and I can't tell who they are. Mm. I look at your work and I see you, even okay, cool. as you're shooting other people. Okay, cool, and, cool, cool. And cool. I find that a really interesting, um, and I find the word purpose kind of kicks off that, you know, thread 
as to how we how you got there and what that's all about and who you are behind your work. Okay, cool. Uh, I can step on that. Um, so essentially, I just I like uh, like I said, inner city kid from Houston. Um, I just want to show reflections of me and my peers to the world in a sense of uh, an artistic eye, I guess. I could say I have one. Everybody's been saying that lately. So um, I just want to show, you know, the inner city situations in a different light. Um, A lot of people, and I'm not knocking it, the people that do it, they do like a grimy or gritty or always showing, you know, how hard and tough situations can be. But that's not my MO. Like, I understand that it is hard and, and it, you know, the inner city life can be difficult, but I just want to give a outlook outside outside of that. You know, I think that's, that's what it is then, because what I saw was a rare form of beauty and passion and love from the inner city that I've, I don't think I've ever seen that before, the yeah. way you represent it. It's very unique, and it... I don't know. I was I was looking at it one day. I get all emotional about things, and I I don't know. There was, a, I just I got tears in my eyes looking at your work. That was so it just it blew me away. It really appreciate did. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. And I don't quite know how you do that. And I wondered what drove you. I just wondered so many things about you. So when you say you were always the guy with the with the camera, you didn't say it that way, but that was what you said, because um, you played football, right? Mm-hmm. and you did other things and you were always the one with the camera why um my i got that from my mom so my mom would have different oh so i'm by the way i'm not i'm nigerian by the way i'm i'm a houstonian by the way of nigeria both of my parents are nigerian immigrants or nigerian were you born, in, Ni- were you born in nigeria no i was born here wow so what a first heritage. Gener- yeah so I'm first generation um so my parents, we would have these big parties when, we were, when I was young, and I would be in charge of the camera at different periods of the time. I mean, different periods of the night, yeah. So I just had a knack for it since then. And that then is... I, I figured out where the camera was and then in the house, and I would still take photos of me and my brother, uh, you know, just through the days. So, so when you looked through the lens and you did all this, what, was it like... Were you documenting? Were you? Yeah. Because I, yeah. I, I grew up with a camera in my hands, too. And my parents yeah. did it all. And I know what I was feeling and thinking. And I'm curious to know what it was you thought you were doing. What it was, not just you thought you were doing, but what it was you were really doing behind the camera, capturing what? No, I was documenting. So just, yeah. you know, the times that you know, we were having and the enjoyment and everything. So when it would be time for adult group photos, they would call me over to take the photos. So I really, would do it. yeah. So that you just always had that gift. Yeah, I guess. I, I... Wow. So when you first, so when you, so ah, too many thoughts. All right, as usual, this is welcome to me. Too many thoughts always at the same time. Um, so when you were playing football, were you photographing the sport? And no, the, no, his... I didn't take photos of the game. I was taking photos of uh, me and my peers throughout the whole time. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you were like Linda McCartney. (laughs) I'm not familiar with her, but uh, well, uh, Paul McCartney's wife back in the '60s was uh, Paul McCartney of the Beatles fame, all that kind of stuff. She always shot uh, all the behind the scenes. Oh man! Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And she eventually she died of cancer, but um, her book her books um, were incredible of all those years. Mm-hmm. Um, with those guys, because she she and Paul were together, you know, from the get go, pretty much, and um, so she documented all that. Oh man, she has like a great insight there. Yeah. yeah, as as do you. So that's why I say you're like the Linda. Uh, sounded weird if you don't know who she is, but the Linda right. McCartney of. Yeah, that is so cool. So, did you ever publish it, or was that just for your friend? No, they're just they're just they're on Facebook, and the cool thing is. Like once a year, one of the, my peers, uh, one of my teammates will go tag their stuff in the photo. Cause, really? Yeah, because it's a moment locked in time for a lot of us. You know, um, I'm in my mid-30s, so most of my teammates are in the mid-30s as well. So all those six-packs and uh, flat stomachs <laughs> are gone. 
So they yeah. just don't, you know, they, they like to go reminisce. And I didn't realize that's what I was doing for my peers at all. You know, get, you know, locking in the moment for them because we are like right on the cusp of digital, my age group. Uh -huh. So some people still have film photos. Some people have the beginning of digital. So you're able to go to Facebook and say, hey, this was me at, you know, 21 years old. And a lot of people don't have that ability. Do you ever think of putting that into a book, even if it were just like a simple p downloadable PDF or something that someone could actually um, in? I've considered it. I've considered I think it's it. So, I always think it's so important and so um, kind of, you know, awesome to have. I'm a big believer in print. So. No, I am, I am as well. If you could yeah. see my wall, I have it all over the place. Yeah. And then I, I print all our vacation photos when we, as a, when we go for a family. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you guys, we're also, we also always in these lives do, do Q and A. So if you have questions or thoughts, throw them in here. Cause uh, it's always fun to weave that into the conversation as well. Um, okay. So when you, what made you decide to, uh, to switch, not switch. Wait. So you've been taking photos, but at some point you decided to be a professional. What made you think you could do that and you wanted uh, to do that? So there's a company here in, in Houston called InTheMix.com. Uh, uh -huh. So it was just like an event photography service that we would go to different parties and things like that and take photos of people. Um, so I was doing that and, you know, I was able to, like, take care of myself. So I still hadn't graduated uh, prototypical artsy person you know go to school and can't get it locked in and get it done so I still hadn't graduated so I was doing that as well um, but I was you know coming towards my 30s and I was like I gotta get serious uh -huh. so um, I finally graduated and then when I graduated I was uh, substitute teaching I was gonna take the you know teaching route and uh, I what just, were you teaching I was gonna do math oh my god really Dude, yeah, so you, yeah. can do, you can do math too. No, I'm not that good. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was I was gonna do middle school and under. I see. No, no I'm not I, that I, good. I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's when I tapped out. <laughs> I'm really not that good. That's why I married my husband because he's good at math. <laughs> yeah. I'm good at money, but math, no. Yeah. But uh, interesting. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do that, and I don't know. You know, I don't know if your followers are very spiritual. Um, pretty much I just got down on my knees, prayed to God. and was like, hey, I'm going to like do photography. You got to make it very obvious for me. And I just left. I had another part-time job. I had another, and I left that and it just kind of took off from there. And I've been able to take care of me and my family with photography since then. Wow. That is, that would a gift. That's a gift from God. I know whenever yeah. I pray, I always say, and make it so obvious, even I won't miss it. Miss it, yeah. <laughs> Because I hate it when I miss the deal, miss yeah, the yeah. view. Um, that's beautiful. So it really was a a divinely orchestrated move. Mm -hmm. Interest. Right. That's that explains a lot. That explains why I feel what I feel. I don't just see what I see in your work. It's it's part of what I feel, which made me so curious. Um, how do you? Since I don't photo. See, I, I'm a travel and landscape photographer. So the whole notion of photographing people like I do it when I'm out like I just came back from a road trip right in Zion and mm -hmm. so anytime I was in the um, more populated areas there were always people trying to get a selfie or a picture of themselves and <clears throat> I always jump in and say hey you want me to take your picture and then we have the best time and the pictures are great and I'm like but I could never do it for a living it I photographed um, a couple friends weddings just you know as a favor type of thing and I was so stressed out I almost threw up I mean <laughs> It just, it freaks me out. And so how, how do you, um, you obviously have an affinity for people and have always been around people and you grew up around your family and photographing them. But when you take on, say, a wedding couple, like, how do you, how do you get those photos? Not just the way you set it up, but the people that you photograph are so comfortable and so real. It's like, I've never seen anything quite like it. They're amazing. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, if I take on a wedding client, uh, they have free access to me to the wedding. So me, the bride, and the groom get in a text chat, and we're cracking jokes all the way to the wedding. 
Um, so, for instance, I have a couple. I text them, you know, happy turkey day. And, you know, don't get too full because you won't be able to fit in those, uh, those dresses and uh, suits. You know, things like that. I play, yeah. I'm playful along the way. And, I, I, you know, I'm still very respectful. Um, but, yeah, you just got to build a rapport with people because some people can instantly let you in. And a lot of people are a, little, a lot more guarded. But you just got to chip away at it piece at a time. And don't be afraid of rejection. Some, like, those people who won't let you in instantly, it's not necessarily they're saying no at that moment. They're just not ready. So if you're rejected, you know, just come back around. And, you know, I've had brides where I had to go through the whole day and it was probably like seven hours in before they were, hey, how are you doing? Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It happens all the time. Wow. Because you can't tell. You can't tell. Yeah. At least the ones that you, obviously, you put the really good ones on your website. Your color sense is is unbelievable too. I don't, I don't run into people who have such a bold and just spot on sense of color. Like, where did that come from? I just been doing it. Um, and I, you don't understand. I hear it all the time and I'm just like, I don't get what you guys are saying. Yeah. Um, it's, just, it's just you. Yeah. I, I just, do, I just do it. So uh, I'm very cognizant of making sure that even though I pump up the colors, they're still true to life. I don't want any, you know, I don't want a crazy push on the colors, but I do like colorful. I like things to pop. I want you to see them. I don't want you to just go by and they're melatonin. I want you to see, okay, those blues are very blue or those yeah. reds are very red or yeah. that his skin tone is really true to color. So that's yeah. what I'm big on. It's just, I mean, they're so, so gorgeous. Somebody makes a comment here. I met Fred when I saw his Nikon 610 and I love his work. I loved his work back then. So his work now with Fuji just shows it's not gear so much, but the man behind the camera making yeah. the pictures that has the talent. Yeah. You know, I know yeah. that in my area, you know, Ansel Adams is like, you know, the, the icon of landscape photographers. And he, one of his famous quotes is um, the most important part of the camera is the 12 inches behind it. <laughs> <laughs> True. And yeah, True. it really is. And yeah. Yeah, that's heart and mind all together, I think. Um, do you feel like, is the way you focus in your, in your world and your photography, is it, is it really, is it in the moment or at your age, are you thinking about legacy and making a difference and your, your purpose within all of this? Does that yeah. factor in at all? That switch clicked on recently because I look back at my work and I did a lot of documenting, but without a direction for it. And um, right. I think the sooner younger photographers, or, and when I say younger, I mean younger as in you're just starting your career, not in age, because right. right. you can start you know, being a photographer at any age. But uh -huh. you, you, younger in your career, the sooner you pick a direction that you're building your work, and you be, you'll develop an eye to curate your own work the faster you get to take off in that lane. Um, if you kind of just like, oh, I want to do landscape, or oh, I want to do, and I'm not saying you can't do all these genres. Right. You, you have to pick a way that you do it yourself the faster you take off. Like you people. I had a friend in, mar in marketing who said, you know, even if you can do, like, I've always been able to do lots of things really, really well. So it was always hard to choose one. He said, pick one, just pick one and go deep. Because once you succeed at that, then you can spread out because people will want to know what else you got. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I tell them, I, I do tell people not to niche, but you got to become a master at one. Yeah. Like, in business, you, not per yeah. it's not artistically, but in business. You have business to. Yeah. So um, right now I'm going down a portrait pipe hole. Like I want to learn how to do portraits. I want to just any and every type of portrait. Uh, I'm constantly, anytime I shoot anybody, I'm constantly challenging myself. Because um, you become a master at one, everything else, you'll, that mastery will, I don't know how to explain it, but it'll kind of like, like you said, dwindle down and right. flow out to everything else. Right. So, um, my first thing I tried to master was light. And once I was like, okay, I understand how light works. It just helped me on everything else. So the light, understanding light, or say from one to 10, I say I have a, 
somewhere between eight and nine understanding of what light does, how it affects the photo, what it does to color temperature, how I can adjust my shutter aperture to get what I need, um, how deep my shadows will be, all these types of things that I understand, um, you know, dealing with light. And once I got that general understanding of light, um, everything else kind of flowed easily. So then I rolled over to portraiture. So when I'm making portraits, I'm like, okay, I want to use this packet of light that I know how to use and do this with the portrait. Do you understand? Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Am I Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm noticing new people coming in. I'm just uh, quickly going to tell the newcomers that I'm Karen Hutton and I'm here with today with Fred Ago, who is a Fujifilm creator. Uh, and we're talking photography and inspiration and we're happy you're here. So welcome, welcome. Yep, um, yep. Yeah, Fred, what you're saying makes absolute sense. So what I, what's interesting to me is, you know, inspiration, uh, the, the vision, the impetus, whatever to create comes in, in different ways. So what you're describing, because I want to give you some feedback on, on some portraits, uh, on portraiture that I love and yours is doing that. But you, it sounds to me, I'm just reiterating, it sounds to me like you went about the mastery technically to get it technically right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all these things that you described is, is getting the, the toolbox in order. Um, I, some people do it from, I like, I tend to go the other way. I tend to go, I want to create this, I have this vision and I want it to look and feel this way. What do I got to do to do that? And then I'll retro construct it. That's how I learned to process photos. That's how I've learned to do everything. Um, the best in my mind, portrait work has all the things you're talking about. Um, and this is where I think your natural gifts really kind of, I think it's quantum. I think it's like your intent and your um, feeling just embeds itself in everything you do. So it just kind of comes out this way in a magical way, but really it's a quantum science, quantum physics kind of thing. Yeah. But the best portraits in my estimation have all the things you're talking about. But then you have a, you, your model, your person, your subject, your muse has, let's say, this light falling on them and caressing them, and they're engaging it as well. And it's this love story between light and the person. Yeah. I don't know how else to describe it, but those are the most jaw-dropping portraits in the world, and, and you have that thing. You yeah. do that. No, and it was, it was just... I, taking the time to understand where those type of lights will be. Because before I would see those type of images and I would go shoot and say, why is it my stuff looking like this? So like you said, I, I went in about it that way. Right. So it's because it's the same thing. I think almost everybody's like that. You go about it like, I want to go make this thing. And then I would try to go make this thing and I didn't have the tools in the toolbox to make that thing yet. So right. I said, all right, let me spend some time developing the tools, uh, understanding. So I spent years in the studio to understand how the studio works. Um, then I spent years just shooting at 7 a.m., 6 a.m., 5 a.m., just seeing how the light looks and what type of image you get at that time. I spent plenty of years shooting at sunset to figure out if I want this or want that. So I've developed over time ability to look at an image and say, all right, they did this, 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 this. All right, if I wanted to do the same thing or something similar or use it in my own, in my interpretation, I need to do it like this. So I, yeah. I, rec I tell everybody try to get, just get some skill sets. Yeah, did you get yours? Did, did you say you went to school or you didn't go to school? No, I went to University of Houston, but um, my only photography class was um, in high school. So, so where yeah. did you learn? Just experimenting, YouTube videos, reading? Like, how did you go about yeah. getting that? So I'm, in, I'm in that weird space where, the, like I said, digital and film. So YouTube was like a new thing. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, you couldn't go to YouTube University to learn everything photography was. Right. Um, his name is... Uh, uh, Jamal Ellis, uh, but his name is at J Vince Photography on here. That is my mentor. He used to hold my hand through everything. I would be in the studio at one and four hundredth of a shutter and be like, man, half the screen is black. What's wrong? My camera broken? And he would hold my hand and say, 
you can't shoot past 200, you know? And, um, or I would say, man, I love how the, the sun is real golden, but every time I go shoot at one o'clock, it doesn't do that for me. And he would once again, hey, you kind of got to shoot around these times. And so he gave me uh, my essential skill sets. And then I just went from there and just kept fine tuning them. Um, somebody now could probably learn everything I know in two to three years because of the internet. But this is like 10 years of messing up and getting it right. Right. But yeah. with a ment with a really good mentor to, you know, guide the early parts of it, that makes yeah. all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. um, how much, I want to come back to, to technical stuff, but I'm kind of curious how much of, um, I'm trying to think of the right way to ask the question. So I'm just going to jump in. It may or may not be the right way to ask it, but how much of this is a spiritual mission for you? Um, all right. So, okay. We'll, we'll talk about the spirit and like how feelings, um, majority of the portraits that you see, I see the people in them before they see themselves. Like I look at people and I'm like, ah, do, 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 do. And like, I have a group of friends that I do, and they're in my head, in my Rolodex. And I'm like, I want to shoot with you guys, but I haven't seen the shoot for you yet. And I know that might sound weird. Like I'm sitting around and walking around thinking about people, but no, like I'll see a situation and then that person will instantly, you know, fall into that situation. So, so these are people that you know, or that you meet or that come to you, or how do these people a lot of the people I've just seen around, just met. Okay. Um, there's one uh, image where there's a young man, his name AJ 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 McQueen, sorry, and he has dreads uh, and they go upward like that. I literally saw that whole when I saw him, I was like, okay, I can do something with him. Then I saw him again, and that whole shoot just processed itself in my head. So I was just like, all right, cool. Let's do it this time, this day. We're going to shoot it like this. And I just need you to wear this. So, and so is that the, something then that you do for yourself for your own thing? Or, and, or do, you, does, do you charge no, for that? No, this is no, a real no, no, question. No, no, that, like, wasn't, that was, if I come up with an idea and I, you know, ask you for your time, I don't charge for personal projects. So this is, I mean, I think that's a tremendous thing for people to know that you, you can do that. And you should do that. That, you mm -hmm. know, it's a thing to do that. Um, I don't think a lot of people necessarily think. Oh, my, my, my most lucrative image, um, he didn't pay me for it. I just was like, hey, it's the, there's a sunflower photo uh, where the guy's holding the sunflower. Yes. I, that was a dream. Like, I just saw it over and over in my head. So I was just like, okay. I, and I called my friend up. He said, like, all right, cool, let's do it. And we went and did it. And I landed the shot. And I was like, that's exactly what I've been seeing. It wasn't that I saw him. I just saw that and then I figured out who would fit into that peg. Wow. Yeah. See, so, I think that's a really important part. I have a, I, since I, when I teach, I do um, teach people how to find their artistic voice and kind of like how all that works, right? So that's part of the whole, um, what I call the, the arc of creation, which is where you have the vision, you have the feeling, whatever it is, and then you hold it and you see it and love on it, whatever. And then you have a chance to do it and you got to do it and complete it and then decide, you know, is that the thing or do I want to do it again and then do it again. But you got to manifest it and roll it through the whole process. Otherwise, the whole thing just goes. Bleh. Yeah. And it'll fade away. Yeah. So you so. keep it. You really keep the creative juices going by doing mm. it. Oh yeah, I went through a period almost three years where I just wasn't doing anything personal, strictly gigs, 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 and I was just like, yeah. And then thank the Lord, and not thank the Lord, then COVID happened, and I just revisited. I like shooting this because I like to shoot this type of stuff. Right. And I, I could honestly say I went through a process of finding my voice again. Yeah, because you really have. We have a really good question here. What's Do up? you find there is more of a calmness in your photography when you have God along for the ride? I hope you understand what I'm trying to ask. No, totally get it. Uh, yeah, uh, I think what he's trying to say is when you go along for the ride versus just pulling everything together and then shooting it, I'm assuming is what he means. 
Um, no, when you go down that road and take your time and curate everything and, you know, become comfortable with the subject or the, the set or the scene, for instance, um, let's just say if I was, I'm going to just say I'm a landscape, landscape photographer and I wanted to go shoot, um, what's the horseshoe? In the horseshoe bend, yeah. Horseshoe bend. If I just ride out there and I've never seen it before, never thought about it before, and I just happen to see it and I pull my camera out and shoot it, I probably won't get the best shot. But okay. if I like look at a million photos and see how I'm going to do it and just fill it all the way out and I'm thinking about it as I'm driving out there, I'm going to shoot from this angle, I'm going to shoot from this angle, I'm going to shoot this, I'm going to do this over here. And you really cook it up in your mind by the time you get there. I mean, slow cookers are the best sometimes. Oh, you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. most flavor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the, yeah. Room up with aroma and everything. So, yeah, I do agree with uh, just slow cooking it. I have another uh, shot in my head that I'm putting together. I just got to get the pieces together, find out the time. Um and I think that one's going to do really well. And I don't do it for it to do well. I mean, I think it's going to look well. It's going to convey what I'm trying to tell the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you do. You you have a message. You really have a message. And it comes through visually. I don't know what the words are. But um, I, I, it, it's, it's very unique, shall I Thank say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Fred is phenomenal. Fred has creative posters. Do you plan? Uh, do you plan these to become posters for sale, or are they just great projects you decide later on to make posters or whatever from? When people, when people ask for it, you know it happens. Uh, like I said, my most lucrative photo was the sunflower with the grill photo. Um, yeah. That that whole situation was. Uh, you know, it was like the whole world was upside down at that time. We had COVID, we had, uh, you know, uh, an armed black man being killed and everybody seeing it publicly for the first time. So I just wanted to show that, you know, yes, these things, these teeth that people see and they automatically have a predisposed notion about those teeth. Right. I wanted to show up like it in a completely different way. So that's why I brought the, uh, you know, the sunflowers. Like, yeah, when, you know, it's just a fashion. It's a thing that we do. It's not who we are. You understand? But it yeah. is part of who we are. And that's something we like to do. And when I say we, I'm saying like inner city, African-American, Black culture, uh, or any culture that does, because Hispanic people or people from his Latin countries do also wear gold teeth. So right. it doesn't automatically say, you know, you're a thug or you're a villain or you're a low grade person. It's just something that they're doing to express themselves. So I just wanted to show the, the, the contrast. And it did so well and people started to ask for prints. I did sell prints. I, um, yeah, when you were just talking just now, I was thinking you, Here's what I here's what I love. One of the thing, one of the many things that I love about your work is um, you shoot the soul of a person, and in that sense, it is divine, it is pure, it is from God, it's incredible, and but you don't stop there because you also, even as we are expressions of the divine, we are also we're connected, but we're individual, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in that, in that sense, we're all divine, divinely orchestrated and created and we're all brothers and sisters and yet we are all individual too. Yeah. We're individual expressions of that one expression. And the way you blend the two is, just blows my mind. It really yeah. does. That's, that, I spent ever since that day when, you know, when we met in that meeting, I was like, I went and looked at your work and I was like, I don't even know how to form the questions. I mean, I was just so impacted by what you do that, um, yeah, I think that's that's one of the, one of the takeaways for me, and it's and I noted it because it's exactly what I try to do in my landscape work because I feel the earth has a soul. It's created by God. It is. I feel as though everything I see is an expression of that, 
you know, yeah. it might be a tree or a river or an ocean or a whatever, but these are not things, they are expressions of the divine. Mm -hmm. How do I want to tell the story? So I'm constantly like, hi, you know, I'm talking to my gear, I'm talking to my subject. I'm like, who are you? What's your story? What are we, what are we doing? What are we, what are we going to share? Because I want people to feel something. I want them to connect to that world because partly, be, I mean, I don't really think about the fact that we could lose it all, but you know, if I stop and think about it, I'm like, I really want people to have that sense of nature and who she really is mm -hmm. because it's quite profound. And I get that same feeling in your work. So it's, it's notable. <laughs> well, appreciate it. Um, I'm going to give you a funny story. Uh, so we're shooting in the white sands in New Mexico. And I don't think people realize how quiet it is in nature, how really, so I could hear my, as I'm talking, I'm like, this is how I sound. <laughs> cause you can, you can hear yourself cause it's so quiet. There were no right. other human beings around us for yards. So, um, and that was, um, I had a really great appreciation for uh, just being outside at that moment. Cause sometimes in the city, you're always around all this man-made stuff and you're like, Oh, look at man, we're so great. And but then you go out to this the sun dune that's naturally there. That yep. Just is taking up space and it's so massive and there's nothing you can do about it. And it reminds you in little moments like that when you can hear your own voice, like you're alone and we're all just in this together. Yeah. And it reminds you reminds you of who you are and lets you experience yourself in a really different and pure sort of way. Um, that also brings me to another thing that I experience in your work that is something that nature brings and that I just love, which we all know, but what's interesting about awe, so awe is what I'm talking about, A-W-E. So what you're describing is a sense of awe. Now, mm -hmm. people kind of go, yeah, whatever, awe, of course you feel it in nature. But the thing about awe is now I, I love what they've done because there are people who have realized what a transformational completely next level quantum thing that awe is so they so there's actually now been studies and in empirical evidence um about what the transformational experience of awe actually does for people it affects your brain it affects your cognitive function it affects your um your sense of connectedness to people of who you are just like what you described you know all of a sudden you go is that what i sound like all of a sudden, you know, all of this is just being and I'm in it and you feel smaller and shifted and it's, it's just, you can never forget. You just told me yeah. this story and, it, and, it, and you will never forget that. So they call it, I mean, some of them are calling it the 11th emotion. Um, that is, some of them call it the, the master emotion. Some of the scientists, you know, that are, that are studying this, psychological scientists. Those of us who have spent a lifetime in nature know it. And so Ooh. to have something to point to it instead of being called, oh, well, you know, I've heard people say, oh, she's a good photographer. She's a little woo-woo, which is good, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So, you know, the woo-woo thing comes from spending my life in nature and around animals and being transformed over and over and over again by this very sense that is, um, I believe we're hardwired for it. I believe we crave it. I believe that it can be found anywhere and everywhere. And I find it in your work. Yeah, that's it. another thing. It's so it's, I feel like, I mean, I'm kind of like going, and I, I see this in your work and I see that in your work, but it's part of what oh, fascinated me to get to know you a little bit because it's all there. And I don't, especially growing up in an inner city, it's sometimes it's hard to find. Sometimes it's hard to move beyond the grit and the challenge and the hardness of inner life, inner, uh, you know, inner city life, to this. Sense. Yeah, no, no. So uh, that's cool. Uh, I do. I don't know if you've noticed. I try to shoot a lot of my stuff in green spaces. Yeah. To to give that contrast of. I didn't want to because there's a lot of cityscapes around, and this is it, the third or possibly fourth largest city in the country. And we have a lot of cityscapes and, you know, city scenery. But I just was like, now nah, I'm going to shoot a lot of this stuff in the green areas. Uh, pull in, when we pull on nature, um, I'm always looking for uh, natural uh, 
like I said, waterways, uh, growth of, of veg, you know, vegetation, things like that, trees, uh, just unique situation, unique scenes and things like that. Because I'm not saying I'm huge on nature, but that that trip to uh, to the sands, it kind of, I enjoy being outside. I can say that. I'm not against studio work and I got some studio mm-hmm. projects coming up, but if I can get outside, I will. Yeah, and you can bring that sense in. It's funny because for some reason or another, um, in the last year, I've had one project after another after another, you know, professional projects, commercial projects and things um, that have called for me shooting, you know, I shoot the GFX, well, I shoot both the X-Series and GFX systems, but calling for the GFX system with the 120 macro. So I've been mm. looking at the world through the 120 macro for almost a year now, <laughs> almost exclusively. It's wild because where it's taken me, what you're describing it made me think of this, and it might be interesting um, for you to think about it, is one of the things I started, you know, I've always noticed the patterns in nature. I, I've always been attracted to them, but I started to get, you know, obviously when you're looking through a macro lens at the natural world, like I do, you start really seeing the patterns, right? And then, then yeah. I start wondering, because I respond to frequencies as well and, um, and energies and so on and so forth. And there was a, I, the more I was through the macro, the more I started to notice these patterns and frequencies. Mm-hmm. And I started looking it up because I figured somebody's done some studies on it. And sure enough, uh, a lot of it is on sound frequencies, but a lot of it, um, which I also can hear, but the patterns and the math behind these, these patterns in nature, some of them are fractal and they kind of go on infinitely, but any section of that, like um, trees, you know, how the branches just go on and they just kind of keep, they're always, so no matter what section of that you, you cut, it's the exact same pattern that the rest of the tree is based on. That's a fractal. Mm-hmm. And then there are, you know, the Fibonacci patterns and the golden mean patterns and things like this. Well, what some of the mathier people, like I know this intuitively, but to read, to learn some of the research and, and get perspectives from people who actually like to crunch the numbers, uh, is it the golden mean? I think the math of it, I'm not verifying it hundred percent, but it's, it boils down to one point, something, something, something that goes on infinity in, to infinity. And they call it the God number because it is the ratio, the number that everything is based on. And it's right there in nature. Mm, you got to send me that. Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'll send you, I'll send you some of the stuff that where I, I, and it just made my brain explode because I'm like, I know what I've been seeing and how it makes me feel. And I know it's the patterns and the frequencies, but here it is in empirical mathematical form, not just from a photography point of view where, the rule of thirds, it's how you want to do a composition and the Fibonacci and blah, 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 because it's more pleasing. I wanted to know why, and I wanted to know why it affected me so profoundly the more I looked at it. So when you, my point, my blah, blah, blah point in, in telling you this is you instinctively go into nature where there is like a frequency and a patterning of divinity, of God, of who we really are. And that's why it's relaxing. That's why it's, it lets people kind of be and kind of start to come back to a harmony that's more natural for them. I don't know why I'm going. You're the first person I've just like gone blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, you're cool because everything you're saying, I've told you, I completely agree with. Yeah. Because it doesn't, like fashion, when it happens, how do these group of people come together and say that this is right, this is what we feel, and this is what we're going to do. And then the rest of the world follows that. Yeah, yeah, the the beginning right here, you know, the wave, and then the rest of the world, a lot of, uh, and and, and fads and waves and things like that. How do these small group of people make those things that the rest of the world going to do? And I, I believe in that too. We all are like on one big wavelength. We're all on one big frequency. Some of us get it sooner than others. Um, some of us need a little more convincing than others. But when that energy is going, it's going to happen. So I do, I might not be talking exactly like in the same terms as you, but I do believe, and essentially, I feel like we're, everything is connected. Yeah. 
Absolutely. It doesn't matter if we're not saying it the same way. The point is we know exactly what we're saying and it's the yeah. same. So which brings me to then, since we work in a, in a, we work in a really interesting artistic field where we use technology as well as light and time. So it's a very quantum technological kind of endeavor. So you have a very specific, very deep vision. What made you choose Fujifilm to fulfill that? I'm not um, advertising Fujifilm, but I have a very specific reason for it. I figure you must too, because you're, okay. you have a really specific approach. So um, here's the story. I had the D800D, oh, sorry. I had the D800 right. and the D610. 610 uh -huh. was great. Um, the D800. Nikon. You're talking Nikon, right? Nikon, yeah. Okay. I had Nikon, two Nikon cameras. Um, the D800 autofocus was horrible. One of the worst hard autofocusing cameras that I've ever had. Um, so I tried the XT2, XT1 out and I said, these com colors are similar to uh nikons so i like i'll try this out let's see what this happens see what see you know if i like this and it was kind of slow then i tried the xt2 out i said if the xt2 is faster than the xt1 i'm gonna switch tried out the xt2 it was 10 times faster than the xt1 uh, and then the colors were better than the d800's colors and then like i said earlier like there's a there's people who start a wave and I understood that mirrorless, at that time, I understood that mirrorless was going to be the next thing. I knew it. I wasn't guessing. I wasn't, I was like, there's no way that a whole group of photographers is going to look inside of the EVF, see something true to color, mm -hmm. be able to shoot it and say, nah, we don't want to do this. We're still going to deal. So yeah, you'll have people who will resist, but for the most part, we're, majority of us are going to end up being mirrorless. Um, so that's the techie. Then I just like how they feel. Yeah. I just, I just like how it feels in my hand. It yeah. just, it's very tactile. But I had, me being, a, I'm 6'3", um, so my hands are bigger. So I kind of had, you know, it was too small. But once I had that grip, I just loved how it felt. And yeah. it was significantly smaller than the D800 with a grip or even the D800 itself. Mm -hmm. So I just like how it feels. Um, I'm able to get, I'm able to go from here to the world and then look at it and say, this is what I want that much faster. There's less thought process through that whole uh, yeah. situation. Yeah, that's if I'm, yeah. that's if I'm thinking about it and having to, uh, 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 it slows down. I just want to get in, see what I'm seeing and bring it to life. Yeah. And XC2, XC3, XC4 and the GFX have been doing that for me for years. Yeah, me too. Yeah, when I when I picked it up, I was like, "Oh, I'm, I'm never going back <laughs> to anything." Yeah, yeah it's just it's. And yeah. the truth of the matter is, it's like, you know, I can I can do much of the same stuff with my iPhone. I mean, I can take pictures and make the same kind of like. My point is, for people who can't afford, you know, great cameras, like, oh, well, then I can't be a photographer. Yes, you can. You can learn yes, you can. to follow your vision. But at a certain point. Um, either as an artist or as a professional, you know, you need, you need those tools to fulfill the vision. And that's why for me, when I picked up Fujifilm and it, it actually helped give me ideas and help me think better and be clearer and get it, got out of my way. And, and then, you know, it, because what, and the other thing, which you're not, which you didn't say, but I'm going to say, cause it's true for me anyway, is that um, this, this quantum piece of, of, so I, I talk about it being quantum because of, because of the experiments that they did when they shot the light down the, down the, you know, I call, always call it down the tube. And then they hit a target. They determined that the, the whole quantum uh, stream mm -hmm. was affected. It's not pure. It doesn't just stay as a stream. It's affected by thought, feeling, and expectation. They mm -hmm. discovered that empirically. They were shocked to discover that, but they discovered that. So I find that to be true in photography more so, I think it's true in everything, but I think it's absolutely immediately true in photography because we're dealing with light and time. Yeah. So the, 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 the vision and the feeling and the commitment, not backing off, but the commitment to that feeling is super important because it'll absolutely embed itself. And that's true no matter what you use. However, for me, Fujifilm was better at it, produced more of the results that were closer to you know how I felt it and experienced it 
and what I wanted to see from it and getting out of my way, just like you said as well. Not, <laughs> I mean, I, people are always curious about the gear we use and why we use it. So okay. sometimes I throw that in there. I, um, I, tell, I tell people just what makes you, it what makes you feel good sometimes. Because um, I tell them, like, I like Fujifilm, and I love what it does, and I love how it's set up, and it makes me feel good when I'm shooting. Yep. So sometimes you, you're going to have to try a couple of different cameras and see, as you're shooting, does it feel good? Right. If it, if it doesn't feel good, you're not going to want to use it. You're not going to want to create. You're not going to want to do anything with it. Right. And um, a lot of people will second guess that, and they'll say, yeah, it doesn't feel good, but it does this. And then they go from heart, you know, from feel to this, and then all bets are off, and turns into a train wreck. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if, and if you're just shooting clientele work and that's all you're going to purely do, yeah, go get the best, most efficient camera. But if you're trying to create things here and there along the way, if it doesn't feel good, you're not going to create the same way that you would have if it felt good. Yeah. That's There's someone in our, in our chat here is saying something really cool um, who he's one of, he's a part of, part of my, my world, right? He's part of my, my audience and stuff. And he says, I definitely, and he switched in the time that we've all been kind of talking and doing all this from Nikon to Fujifilm. And he says, I, I definitely find that the XS10 molds in my hands a lot better than my previous Nikon. And I feel more at ease and comfortable with my Fujifilm than my Nikon, which is like, whether mm -hmm. it's Fujifilm or another camera, that's the whole point. Um, and he says, I definitely like the fact that you see straight off what you're going to get through the viewfinder with a mirrorless camera in general, yeah, and I, not auto focusing and colors. Yeah, I I knew the first time I went through an EVF, I was like, yeah, no one's going to be able to go. It, you can't like, I mean, I could shoot with a DLSR, but, and I love the tactile of the you know the mirror in there. I do love that feeling. Yeah, but, but no, nah, it's nothing like. I often think of it as a paintbrush. I mean, I, I feel like we are, you know, we're artists, we're painting with light, we're painting with time. We're So your brush, like, you know, artists, I, I have artists in my family and they'll sit around the squirrel brush or the, <laughs> the mink brush. And I'm like, whatever, you know, <laughs> and like the, like I'm all, they talk about the squirrel brush and what a, what a beautiful stroke it is. And all I can think about is not that I'm that crazy about squirrels, but you know, plucking the hair, I get all graphic and visual. So I always could have tuned those out, but now I'm like, well, they're kind of like paintbrushes. And which one gives the the feeling and spreads the paint the way you know the way you want it to through your hand? And... You know, no, I agree. Um, going through this journey, I, you do gotta. For instance, like lenses for me, I just different lenses give me different feels. So right yeah. now, I'm, when I'm doing my work, I'm shooting with the uh, the fifty mil. Uh, 1.0 and I know I'm not supposed to shoot wide open but I do anyway because I just like what I get yeah um, if I was shooting a client who was paying me and needed you know deliverables a certain type of way you know I would be at like four five seven one to be safe and yeah you know I would do it the right way maybe even 2.8 at the most but when I'm shooting what I want to shoot I'm like at one 1 1.2 I get it I get it if I don't I don't it's okay yeah yeah, I know. Well, that's, and that's, that's a, a question a lot of people have sometimes is like, you know, well, when I have to do all this client work and do it their way, it stifles my vision. And I'm like, well, then don't stop there. Keep shooting your own stuff and do it your way. Yeah. And explore your vision. Because then you're going to have that to bring to your clients too. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah, those are the best ones when they come and say, hey, th this that you did, can you do it again or a version of it for us? And I'm like, yeah. You I know, in I do voiceovers professionally. So a lot of times in, in sessions, we do it. Makes the way, sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do it, it. We do the client thing, right? You know, and sometimes they really know what they want and they really break it down to every little painful detail. But then at the end, the good ones will always go, okay, let's just do a take and do it your way. Do your thing. Do your thing. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's not. But to have that, it, it means you, you got to have shot at one in 1.2. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a client recently. Um, he was doing clothing line release and he wanted like all these, you know, straight on and clear. And then at the end, I said, hey, can I just mess around? And 
all the images of me messing around is what he's using to yeah. roll out. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's how you get, that's how you get those clients coming back. Cause you do, you're absolutely willing to do their thing their way. And then mm -hmm. you bring it as your unique, special soul and special skill set and special everything. Yeah. It's like getting two, it's like getting two sessions in one when you're able at, for, as a client, when your art, when your artist, your photographer is able to do that. So you, it's an extra, um, value. I think that you bring. Yeah. You get a piece of me. Um, a lot of people, yeah. I think they don't realize that, you know, even though me, you, we could take the exact same photo at the same time. We, it, one has a piece of me and one has a piece of you. It's just different. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah, you know, when you when you they come and say, "Oh, I want this. I want it exactly like this." It's not. You're not getting any. You're not getting any of me. So it's not going to be the best of the best. But if yeah. you let me pour myself into it, so you just it's a hundred times better. Yeah. If you really get into your zone, you can't help. Honestly, it's like a voice. Okay. So I I also coached voice for 25 years, and one of the things about a voice, which I feel is also true as an artist or a photographer, is that if you so if your so your voice is an instrument, right? It's hardwired to your body, obviously, and it's mm -hmm. but it's designed. It's designed to broadcast who you are, and and mm -hmm. it's designed to broadcast who you are physically, mentally, emotionally, soulful, every which way. It's your complete identity. It's who you are baked into audio. So when people don't sound like the like their real voice is when it's tight you know, and they got like habits or their, you know, their throat is tight. So my coaching was always the first thing was to release the instrument and then how to use this, you know, released instrument, you know, for whatever it was they needed to use. Mostly it was TV news broadcast at the time, but um, you know, to get it dialed in so that it performed well in that context. So yeah. my feeling is that if you're kind of free within yourself as an artist and you're, fulfilling the client vision you can't help but have your own stamp in there because again it's quantum we're dealing with light isn't that yeah. handy so yeah. who we are gets baked into what we're doing even though we're fulfilling it may not be as good as what you do at the end but it's still there yeah. and i know you know that i'm saying that for for others too yeah. <clears throat> okay i don't want to keep you longer than an hour this flew by oh my gosh i could go <laughs> on, and on with you this is so fantastic okay. um I had one question aimed at me. Can I share some of this information? Uh, I think we were talking about patterns and frequencies. Yeah, I, I've been meaning to write, write a lot of that down, but share some of this information in the weekly email that I send out so we can delve into it more. Yes, I can do that. Um, yeah. I, I promised a book a while back and then I go to sit down and write <laughs> and 5,000 other things happen. So yeah, <sighs> working in the world. On, yeah. But, yeah. you know, the world needs to hear some of this you're stuff. Cooking it. All you're doing is you're cooking it a little bit longer. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, that's a little it. more you're seasoning, good. a little more cooking. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. yeah. Well, I like, ready I like, to be ready. I'm going to call you for the pep talk the next time I feel like a loser for not getting it all done. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we all, in this world, we all get down on ourselves, but you have to have a, you know, remind yourself that you're not in a, a traditional structure. And the fact that you're getting it done is amazing is amazing absolutely yeah. and that's for all of us listen fred tell everybody where to find you online and what to uh what you're working on i mean i don't know if you have anything you're working on now that you're going to be sharing but at least uh let everybody know where to find you hey what's up guys once again my name is fred fuji fred ago um houston photographer you can find me on ig at fred Ago, so Ago is spelled A G H O. You can also find me at Twitter at Fred Ago underscore. Uh, my website is www.fujifredfred.com. Then my wedding website is www.fredago.com. Um, I do have a Flickr, you can find me on there. It's Fred Ago. Uh, yeah, that's it pretty much. That's fantastic. And for everybody, you can find me at KarenHuttonArt.com. I'm actually having a sale this weekend because it's Small Business Saturday tomorrow. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Come on, American Express. Give me your yeah. Money. Come on. So I'm offering a 30% off uh, sale on my Whimsical Reveries collection. There's a link in my bio to find all that good stuff. Um, but mostly, I just wanted to bring Fred in to wish you all happy holidays and give you some juicy stuff to 
think about and feel on and inspiration. Turkey for, day. Yep, and Cameron's putting in your link tree. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Cameron, cool. for doing that. Thank I you. It. All right, Fred, thank you for this. Thank it's you. A real blessing and a real joy. So, mwah to you and to everyone, and uh, we'll be on the interwaves. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.